Bing bong. How you doing, Ali? Good. Hear me well? Yep, you're coming through nice. Nice. Yeah, perfect. I'm okay, not echoing. Cool. Nice. So, how are you doing, Josh? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, <laughs> Our gracious host isn't here today, so it's good that we're self-organizing. Uh, yeah, let's try to handle this this uh, this topic, the two of us, without a third. Oh, what uh, we do? Uh, so, where should we begin? Have you got any kind of? Yeah, like I around it. Yeah, I uh, I read the article, and I mean. You know, with with my background, let's say, uh, Spiral Dynamics to me was introduced through Ken Wilber, and um, uh, so I sort of arrived from that direction. And reading your article really somehow clarified and brought up new perspectives. Um, and the first question I just wanted to ask you is. Um, yeah, why why do you think people that are maybe new to spiral dynamics or they're sort of exploring this um, the development of uh, adults in, in terms of consciousness development or, or personal development or psychological development, why they sh should maybe start with grace? Why, why do you think it's so important? So I guess I should say like I, I've rummaged around in a bunch of these and so spiral dynamics ken wilbur and so forth all kind of came up lots um and one of the things that's really bugging me is the massive amount of ontologies that we have myself included um mm. and so trying to kind of get away from where we're at in terms of ideologies um has kind of been weighing on me. And so any of these seem relevant to me, at least. Um, like, I, I think I started with Wilbur and yeah, he was most interesting to me. Uh, spiral dynamics, I'm less versed in, um, but spiral dynamics came out of Graves's work. And so, you know, if you want to understand the present, understand some history. And so I kind of feel it's a similar thing with what happened in uh, transpersonal development. And so you have a bunch of people around that time. And to me, it seems that Graves's research is kind of the primordial soup that a lot of it emerged out of. And by a lot of it emerged out of, he was the only guy that actually backed stuff with evidence. Uh, and so. This is, I think what I, yeah, sorry to interrupt, but what I found very interesting is that maybe differently than because he was probably one of the first to sort of dive into this what he did was he started with experiment rather than with theory um i think you pointed that out and uh i mean science does always sort of this retrofit rather they come up with the theory and then they try to prove it somewhere you know um yeah, it's quite interesting i found yeah. that interesting yeah but maybe you can run through a little bit of the yeah, these experiments that he did to sort of come up with with these uh, different stages. I think that's interesting. Come on. Um, um, yeah. So what was really cool with uh, Graves, in my opinion, at least, is that he uh, kind of gave rise to a thing called grounded theory, which is uh, open inquiry in its own sense. And so he started with a whole bunch of questions and you know, sought to answer the questions rather than starting with a hypothesis and then kind of retrofitting back to meet his hypothesis. And like, he was a um, big fan of Abraham Maslow's work. Um, just Maslow didn't conduct experiments to, you know, surface things. And, you know, had he started with his theory and then ran some experiments to test it, um, 
well, he was pretty close to Graves, so it wouldn't surprise me if they would have come around the same result. But I think it's quite nice, at least, that Graves started with the questions and then went on and got deeper. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, uh, and it was somehow, I think, surprising to him how diverse the, the responses were with uh, with the experiment that he ran with the students, right? Um, where he asked the questions of uh, what is, how would you interpret psychological health, I think, right? Um, and through that sort of inquiry, a lot of answers the came four out. four C's. Uh, what, is yeah. it, what are they? Uh, conflict, controversy, confusion and contradiction i, I think mm -hmm. be, can they be integrated into a model of psychological health so can you brave all of them for and then you're saying you know, yeah, yeah still got work yeah. i'm sure we both do on that but oh yeah still, you know. how how does how does that work i mean that that, that was one of the questions actually uh, i had from the from the so these four things right those those are four conditions for psychological health maybe i i don't really know he was asking the question whether they could be integrated in and from some yeah of the, um let's call them strange cats that i've run into in my travels it would seem that the answer is yes that that can happen but how people deal with it is beyond me <laughs> yeah sure yeah I mean, to me, it seems like you know the every time the that some of somehow there's a change that we're longing for uh, a topic we want to sort of get get to can be I want to be uh, uh, I want to be able to say no. I'm <laughs> familiar with that one. Uh, then when when sort of that 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 goal that I want to reach. Uh, starts to become closer there are some resistances that we sort of have to go through um and that's the whole beauty of uh, i think of well beauty and also the hardship of uh, of personal development it is, is that you you sort of continuously bounce on walls and of and assumptions a lot of times that you have built uh, which are this i think keegan calls it immunity to change so it's like you you build around all these resistances all these types of beliefs uh, this sort of grounds you to where you are at and sort of prevents you from uh, bringing in these new even insights right or these new capabilities that need that allows you to reach that goal or topic um, uh, burn it down and case and uh, so forth yeah sorry to interrupt but yeah exactly yeah yeah and I mean uh, you, you, I think you yeah, I think you pointed it out, which is like a, almost you want to um, you want to make sure that people understand that every time there is a change happening, it's not just within you that the problem, you know, that you might be having some beliefs that are sort of uh, keeping you from from moving forward, but the environment around you starts to become strange. Friends that you, yeah, I think you mentioned it a couple of times in the article, you know, like friends, family that might know you a certain way and kind of want to keep you a certain way, you know, because you're predictable in that way. Nothing so you're changing important. and you have to be ready for it. Yeah. And you have to sort of be ready to kind of fight or I think the best way and the most probably healthy way to deal with it is letting people know that you're going through a developmental process or that you're working on yourself well there's that's... a weird figure uh, that i'm not sure is actually real but i've heard that anything that changes past five percent from the norm in nature dies and maybe you're better suited to comment on that but i've definitely seen it with my own development and friends of mine um as they're developing the resistance when you know, if you're seen a particular way every day and, you know, you turn your cap from back to front or something like that, everybody starts, you know, resisting that, uh, taking the piss ah, okay. or whatever. So that, that's the 5%. So like, as soon as you start to use a new language, then people start to look at you weird. Yeah, for sure. Even, right? Like just a few new words or like, yeah. Of course, I mean, um, that's the thing that the, 
for, for quite a lot of people, the hardest part, especially if you are at the, um, uh, maybe the DQ level or, you know, mm -hmm. the more social centric or, um, in Keegan, I guess the word socialized mind would probably be the hardest one because everybody sure. has a whole bunch of expectations on you to act a certain way. And when you start to break those patterns, uh, the cultural yeah. immune system starts to flare up. And, yeah. You know, yeah. And, and, but, but even at, at the ER, you know, the, the more like uh, rational and opportunistic level, it, there is there is a part of like your opportunism is it's also sort of building around a group of people that allows you to opportunistically arrive to a certain like you have to be liked in a way in a very opportunistic way mm -hmm. so if you if you want to be kinder for instance in an environment of a mergers and acquisitions sort of, <laughs> i don't know a very corporate <laughs> environment then of course it's very hard to to uh to do that yeah uh, uh, yeah yeah like coming out of a war zone uh <laughs> you know going in putting flowers in people's guns uh, a la yeah. 60 70s you know um that that's not going to be met with <laughs> too much positivity you're damn no you know? <laughs> no 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 and it's it's uh, it's again like it's quite it's it's the environment sort of um not allowing the change uh, of course, to happen. One one question I had um, about, you know, uh, I think it calls it like there's there's some sort of environmental changes that trigger uh, an individual to to um, to change and develop, right? Um, and I was just wondering. I mean, uh, is it only that? Is it only because of a change from the outside that then it's required a change on the inside of someone and why individuals react differently in, in dif different time scales? What are the, you know, the Greek sages didn't miss as well? Maybe, <laughs> no, I didn't think about it for too it, much. It's an yeah. interesting one. Um, I, I think the answer is yes, personally. Uh, I don't know, but I think the answer is yes, it's about structural coupling to use systems language and like, in the Gurdjieff work, they always do it in group work, and that's because your environment is there, but it's also a malleable environment that can change rather than one that you're embedded in, which might be uh, an office job of some sort or so forth. And so when the environment is that rigid, it's very hard to change because it's going to keep pushing back on you, and if you're dependent and uh, embedded within that environment, then you're never going to be able to overcome and so like leaving the office or whatever to go and become an entrepreneur uh, moving from dq to er um, is the only way forward whereas with groups you have um you have a lot of uh, dynamic interplay between all the individuals and so yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so I, I feel quite strongly uh, that way and um, Sure. I think, I think, you know, uh, the, it actually answered the question. I think what I was looking at was like, does it have to be that uh, more at the, at the bigger scale that the world needs to become, I mean, because you, you suggested like, yeah, we're going to see more Buddhas walking around, right? Something like that. And then I was like, yeah, sure. Um, it, it, it makes sense. To me, you know, that the fact that we, the, the world around us, is, is it becoming more complex though? Yeah. Like this is the question, is yeah, it? Enough. Because at the micro level, of course, I see it in myself when I started traveling and I started going to new places, I needed to behave in a different way and I needed to talk in a different way. I needed to learn a new language and um, development definitely happened, you know, when I see myself five years ago and I, it's a completely different person, you can see the change. Like but um, um, if the world is, has become more complex, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 in general, I like outside of my own micro, sort of micro, micro reality. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be uh, hard to say without having immediacy bias, but uh, given uh, 
uh, the events of the last year? <laughs> I think the answer is certainly a yes. Uh, not allowed to travel without a nose swab, uh, you know, got to be under curfew at these hours and so forth. And you can see, for instance, uh, the regulation trying to keep up with the complexity of the corona situation. And so in that one regard, we, I think we can say pretty certainly, yes, the world has become more complex. Will it remain more complex? I, I don't know. Uh, I think that we, you know, evolution tends to move towards higher and higher orders of complexity. And so where these upright creatures uh, that have consciousness uh, as well as cognition, uh, and you can say by definition that the grass is cognizant because it responds to signals and that mm -hmm. shadows and shade, but we've moved from that up to higher levels where, you know, we have cats, dogs, uh, and eventually humans. And it would seem that everything pushes towards more complexity in that regard, having started as a primordial soup. So that that's one way of saying, I think so. And the other way of saying, I think so, would be that organizations are getting faster. And so, you know, uh, 15 years ago, agile was, you know, barely muttered as a word. And now it's all the rage. And so organizations are getting more fluid rather than uh, working in a waterfall or linear kind of path. You can say, you can say technology brought that, that sort of thing. Just, uh, yeah. Um... Sure. They could proceed, yeah, like the internet, yeah, the central a fixed job, you know, like the fact that, uh, you know, my parents could have a job that they would say I would be doing the same thing for, yeah, yeah, or, or, yeah, or yeah. at least my trajectory would look like You're that. Man, huh, Ali? And I mean, we, we have a lot of friends, I guess, that still have that mentality, but um, in reality, you know, you you will have to change jobs every two years, you would need to learn a new skill every week you know sort of thing so that's definitely complexity yeah, yeah Fine. leaving frameworks embracing new ones uh scientific now we're gonna use the word paradigm <laughs> or whatever you want to call it but like even even science and reality somehow it's it's becoming very blurry you know so uh i guess we need at one point to embrace yeah, even higher. science has turned quantum and uncertain and <laughs> probable rather than, yeah. you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm reading, well, I'm not going to take it out. Well, it's here actually, but I'm reading this book, which is basically, uh, uh, it's interesting that the um, structure of scientific revolutions and it basically explains how, you know, um, how we deal with uh, science and uh, how science depends a lot on like cultural settings and and the uh, instruments we use. Second so. order cyberneticist by any chance? No, no, no. It's uh, it was a historian of science, like philosopher of science. Ah, okay. but it's it's quite it's quite famous. But anyways, like it's it's you know we need to sort of let go of, of certainty. I think that's also a big part of the. Uh, I guess, higher stages of development in a way, uh, you know, the GT being the non-argumentative, uh, well, maybe you can speak about that. No, <laughs> how, we how haven't do you, how really you it? covered the stages. Um, so uh, AN is um, a habitual learner that's just around and kind of responding to habit. Um, BO is then somebody that is um is looking for base needs um food security and that kind of stuff um cp is in search of power and they learn in a well bo is pavlovian cp is um what's it called law of the jungle <laughs> yeah but I'm looking for their lens. Um, oh, okay. Skinner right, that did it. Uh, operant, that's the word. Mm. Uh, and then uh, DQ is avoidancy learning and kind of very rigid and linear and 
hierarchical and um, crusade like I don't know colonial um, sure so sure sure well deferring to authority uh, yeah there's quite a lot of that now still around yeah. <laughs> um, CP multiplistic scientific material um, I, I ER, you mean? The... Yes, sorry. Where the hell was I? Yeah. <laughs> CP, you said, yeah. Uh, yeah, ER. ER yeah. The logical positivists, I guess, is yeah. where, where they go. Um, and then we have the you know, FS, <laughs> which is sociocentric and learns through observation. And that's all the subsistence levels covered. And then we we're talking about post subsistence, which was the GT and HU. GTs being um, systems oriented, solving problems, uh, learning through any of the previous modalities. And the HUs, from what I can see, seem to be mystics. Um, they can be techno mystics, but they're certainly mystics. Um, yeah. And yes, you asked me what about those stages now that we covered them? Yeah, like um, I was curious what, you know, um, from let's say FS, which you called social centric, I would almost, I would correct, well, I would call it world centric in a way, maybe yeah. uh, not, not because of Wilbur, but it makes more sense. Sure. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's like yeah everyone is right sort of thing and and maybe um, pluralistic. absolutely pluralistic and well I'd say relativism accepting yeah monoculture yeah. pluralism uh, you know yeah. everything's relative but my relative is the, the only relative yeah yeah <laughs> exactly yeah so but I, I cannot see that that is actually a perspective is taking you know and then. The GT is the one that actually can see that the pluralistic perspective is an actual perspective itself, so it becomes the object, right? Yeah. And then it basically has at hand all these different perspectives coming from the previous stages, and he sort of uses them ad hoc. Um, ad hoc, you know. So when when I think I, I think the yeah. point of uh, right timing, uh, the Buddha saying of right timing. And right action. Um, yeah, they didn't. Sure. Say, I mean, they said right action, but that comes to yeah. mind. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I a think paradox. All, all yeah. Dealing with opposites, which is why uh, Win Wilbur feels so appropriate to me, by the way, is because he outlines all the polarities really well with his four quadrants model. And so that mm. start mm -hmm. to kind of teach you how to separate things into a semantic grid of sorts and understand you know sex and gender are the same thing but under two different lenses yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and i think what it what um what i got most out of out of uh yeah the ken wilbur is it was exactly that like the shift between this like everyone is right sort of thing to everyone is right but as partial truths and at that stage you can also only be able at the gt let's say stage or the more integral stage you can actually start to see the partial truths and the degree of that partiality and how big it is and how much you can use it you know instead of sort of putting everything on the same level, you know, where he's talking about or that flatland, you know, in the book is a continuous flatland, flatland, it's, it's, it's right, you know, because it also, I see it in myself, probably being, being somewhere there, um, not being able to discern from a good opinion or a bad opinion, like, or finding myself justifying oftentimes. Mm -hmm. maybe bad behaviors or, or or bad opinions simply because of this oh, is just another perspective it's just another cultural influence it's just another how do you even... feel about the burqa ali huh? how do you feel about the burqa the burqa yeah the burqa or uh, it's, uh or you know um objectifying women i guess <laughs> you know yeah. yeah 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 just an opinion 
No, but I mean, you know, it's even when he first explained it and then he makes made example of the, the Nazis, you know, then because he took it quite hard, harsh, you know, he said like, you can literally justify from that perspective, literally everything. Mm -hmm. Always just because of, you know, and um, sure, I mean, <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's definitely not a way to go. And I think it's, uh, you have to go through it and go out of it as quick as possible. Yeah, uh, well, they're, they're all relative. Um, and like, I don't know, in Graves' stuff, when I was uh, researching him, uh, it would seem that that is the stage to get people to as fast as possible. Because um, before that, so up to ER, at least, um, humans are inclined to go to war and fight each other and all this kind of stuff. And when you get to the uh, FS or green level, depending which language you're speaking, then uh, it becomes a lot more friendly uh, a place. Mm -hmm. And so, and also a much more capable place that isn't kind of just focused on um, real my material needs. It starts to become, you know, and the stages before it, my power, my salvation, etc. It becomes a lot more open place i'd say and so you know i, I mean it's 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 so tempting to just make uh, it's so tempting to make a to make a, a, a beautiful story but it makes it makes sense like you like which, what you just described the fact that like from all the way to to you know the rational mind you're still willing to go to war you're still on this like mentality of ask them then um, that's why the social centric thing of like, or maybe it's, let's call it world centric, because it's really like a stage where you sort of embrace the everyone is right sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, it, it feels to me that it's, it's good that it's there. It's just like with every sort of uh, perspective worldview you take, you have to know that there are positives and negatives. There are things that, uh, that are limited and that limitation can become yeah that, that can become regression in a way you know and then you sort of end up with with the uh yeah the violence of a black lives matter or uh, also all these sorts of things so regressing down to to more tribal level you know thinking that yep. like you said that perspective the relativistic perspective is the best is the most open one but then it becomes still the we them you know and so you need to go to to the to the next level where you can actually be able to, to see all these different perspective in a yeah it's it's still very paradoxical you know what i mean because just i don't know um it's hard to grasp the old green thing maybe because i'm still in there <laughs> looking at uh, uh, i i don't know um uh, yeah I, and I don't know how great it's because I mean tribalism of it and like I, I've definitely fallen into those traps as well myself and the you know my perspectives the best perspective kind of stuff which is a, a <laughs> sad trap to fall into but we you know to go through stuff well to to get through stuff we have to go through it and uh Brian had a really interesting take on this as well as like we, you know, Graves called them stages, but um, he, he didn't so much vibe with that language. Mm -hmm. um, he also didn't vibe with um, the uh, emergent coping mechanisms. Uh, he preferred the term healing. And actually when you frame it in that way, it's like, Quite interesting to think about because you know <clears throat> each each pendulum swing between the levels uh, or stages or whatever we choose to call them uh, it's, seems quite like that in a way so like uh, the DQ salvation uh, in the future you know in the afterlife kind of stuff 
probably mm. do themselves a lot of damage with that mentality until it switches and goes right er let's let's get all entrepreneurial and get that stuff now and like go get them and then in that process you do a lot of damage by like not relating so you know it, that becomes your focus and you're losing friends and stuff like that and so when you pass through that level and end up in the fs or green camp then you have to heal from all the damage you've just done at the previous stage yeah yeah so the way you know the the, the coaching thing that i did on uh, integral and had a lot of uh, influence from also uh, keegan work on subject object how yeah. we call yeah. that that uh, sort of integration part is like honoring your and it was actually the first step so you honor what you um what you are right now with yourself and 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 uh, the people around you um before you start to look forward and you always want to sort of so healing yes and also just just being proud of what you what you are at that point because if you only sort of push it away you not only uh, regress in a way or like you just end up being uh, destroying yourself but you also don't bring with you powerful traits or, or, or traits that actually worked for you yeah. and I found it that was that was very powerful yeah so I would say you know with um, with uh, healing uh, there's also the I think the honoring uh, it's a good approach to take in yeah that seems like a good way through it it's kind of interesting because like you can honor yourself at all points to integrate right and so sure. that, that makes a whole lot of sense to do um at what like assuming that dissonance does have to creep in to like drive the search forward then there's a kind of like you have to honor yourself in that process perhaps, but when you're not feeling that you're in the right place, how do you the, do that? I mean, the, there needs to be a trigger that sort of motivates you to then look look within and be like, all right, to just start this, this, this process, you know, uh, a trigger, a thousand triggers, you know, like, Shit, I'm, you know, I'm becoming a uh, whatever, I, I closing myself in, whatever it is that you're struggling with, you know, I'm, I'm being grumpy with people I cannot learn or um, I cannot get that job I wanted or I cannot learn something and like whatever. Um, there needs to be something that that sort of triggers that the dissonance that you call uh or um or the complexity around you for instance that we talked about you know the fact that like maybe your friends are being able to catch up and you're not um and only then when you feel like there is this this um friction then i guess you start the the honoring part of like all right what are the tools i have these are the ones I have. What are the the parts of myself that sort of are not allowing me to do it? And I mean, I'm, I'm very much simplifying this, but I think the immunity to change sort of approach of Keegan, the subject object thing, he has a stage of how you work through resistances, which I think is quite powerful. Um, yeah, I suggest people relevant. to look into, look Just into it. Yeah, is I, I guess from my own kind of take is <laughs> not a huge amount of that honoring going on. <laughs> hasn't been a fun ride uh, for you. Yeah, yeah, no, it really hasn't. Uh, it's been uncomfortable and torturous, but uh, perhaps that was part of the tricks that I was missing. Okay. yeah I'll keep well, my mind on it <laughs> yeah i think i think that's i think that's good i mean uh it also really depends on 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 the individual like 
uh, if I'm, I'm, my personality is usually always avoiding pain. So I think if I would go through, uh, if I had to go through only, only just only pain to, to like, to, to break through, then I'll probably burn out or whatever. Like I just, I would just give up. So I saw somehow I need that, uh, that uh, maybe feeling good every now and then if I'm going through the process of developing um, and you might be more maybe uh, resilient or more or better at dealing with 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 hardship I guess I don't know I, I think I've, I feel some people I saw changing a lot were were really battling through this heavily and then they managed to break through I think it depends on the individual. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, what could it be? Uh, I'm thinking about Enneagrams now, of course. Uh, <laughs> and so I'm thinking about some other um, personalities and how they might go about it. Because I, th I think it's probably quite dependent on the mask you're wearing uh, in that regard. And so, you know, my mask has been one of fear and so i've needed to jump into the deep end on all the things that scare the hell out of me and go through that and if yours is avoiding pain then you know you know, obviously you need that safety here and there or i need that safety here and there and you need that um high here and there let's call it and I, i'm sure. thinking about um others you know like the Enneagram too, which is very relational. And so how they can deal with that, because again, they're masks to wear down, personality, person, mask, etymologically. And so mm -hmm. you're like trying to dissolve that mask as quick as possible, or maybe not, that's, that's a bit of an assumption. But if you're a, a two and prone to, you know, being in relationship, then maybe being alone is the way to go for it and wear that mask down but obviously then needing to come back into relation uh, to reintegrate or whatever yeah 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 that's when the uh, to me that's when the the maps sort of find their limitations in a way <laughs> uh, and uh, or or become also very useful you know because then you start to mix them up and see the, the beauty of, of how, the, how the diverse we are, you know, I think that was a good one that I found in your in your writing that I always sort of put as a reminder for people that write that read about this, like it's, these are all maps, so it's not a territory. Uh, Just um, ontologies, flawed, flawed ontologies that are yeah. ironically about, you know, losing ontologies, but <laughs> still. And it's and it's so exciting you know when you when you write all this uh, when you write when you read all this and then uh, um i mean you start to see around and, and and start to put labels on people it's it's fine but just keep i mean i have it as a mantra now like <laughs> almost within me you know like just like it's it's just a map it's just a map because it's so easy to just start to you know with the enneagram i guess you probably had a similar yeah, uh, like I've got like, sense now of the spiral and the Enneagram. Both of them have been like ontologies I've ingested and then gotten pretty familiar with the qualities of all these things. And now it's trying to like let them fucking go and just, sure, you know, instead of interpret, uh, reflect. I, I don't know quite how to say this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, yeah. Just, just for whoever is listening, like what, what we're talking about here is, um, I mean, as, as I guess this is my opinion. Like, as human beings, we need some sort of like orientation. We need some abstraction to sort of make sense of what's around us, and um, so we create these maps, you know, that sort of are built on 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 experience experiments and observation and 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 qualitative quantitative sort of research um but again uh, just uh reducing reality to into a map 
uh, and that is that is a map again. It's not the territory. It's not the it's not the, the grass you're walking on when when you're looking at Google Map. It's not the the person you're encountering when you when you find your your your, your shop on online. You know, it's it's not the same experience that you get. So I think uh, that's a good reminder. And I think uh, when we're reading when you if you end up reading the article, just keep that in mind. And there's a little reminder in there, so it's good. Hell yeah, thanks, uh, <laughs> thanks for the reminder. Um, yeah. There's a guy called John Bennett who uh, referred to yeah. uh, function being in real. And so, like, words are not reality, they're just words. And semantically, there's meaning behind those words. Uh, and, you know, when we say particular words, we're invoking something and making a gesture. And then it's not what said it's maybe how it's said the tone etc uh, and the um, moment in which it said that makes that gesture unique and it's you know if you just have a court transcript of he said things can read really uh, badly wrong uh, whereas mm -hmm. what's actually said the the spirit of the words um being the gesture and then how they're interpreted the beingness by others um i find really important so as you say the maps not the territory it's just a map it's just a map it's just a map it's just a map grass is yeah. not grass until you tread on it and go ooh. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no but uh, i i think um that's also a, a very good um I think it's one of those p very little pieces of wisdom that you can just bring with yourself throughout your life continuously, you know, and uh, and it will help you, I guess. Yeah, na navigate life with, with more, yeah, with more humble spirits, I guess, or uh, yeah. So back to the stages. <laughs> I don't know. Far away. Uh, that's, Far off now. Let's, uh, let's do it. I, I don't know. I, I didn't want this to be a killer in a way, but uh, um, I, I think um, I've honest, like, honestly, I found the stages and, and all of that very powerful. Um, when I, when I worked with companies that just wanted to sort of, um, you know, approach customers, for instance, in a way where they would just treat them as all the same. Mm -hmm. um for instance oh, and i please. sounds like a company huh? uh, when they treat the customers as material objects so, so yeah so they think they think the same way that i mean uh, yeah yeah i didn't want to derail you please carry on with uh no that no, i was just i was just sort of like rum, rumbling it around but like to me that was what was a sign you know when i you know recently i sort of got a uh assignment to uh, draft like let's say a, a sort of a, a governance plan mm. and and how that would evolve through time and it's just so hard i mean i want to know that <laughs> it's, so, it's just so it's, it's just honestly it's impossible you know to 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 make something meaningful because I mean, you can, you could assume that a certain type of people will be attracted to a certain product and then in, in that way, sort of, and then the beauty of it is like, okay, I've got probably an amount, of, again, generalizing an amount of people, 50%, which are at FS and um, another 30% are ER and then DQ is the remaining 20%. And I sort of through the product, through the governance uh, structure, I want to bring them to the next level so you can cater products to it. But damn, I mean, doing that on a online server, you know, online on the internet, so hard. I think when it when these stages in a way and, and the work you can, uh, it's, it's way more useful if you do it one-on-one -on -one or in uh, small groups, you know, I think that can be very powerful. Yeah. I'm curious what you think on the actual application of it. I think beyond like just individual personal development. 
yeah, it like whew, governance is like the toughest topic there is, in my opinion. It's like a bunch of colliding worldviews or vying for position in some way and to integrate that seamlessly um, is no small task. So how to move things along is like in one, like so, you know, the, the DQ, the Blue Church, they need some kind of um, higher authority, you know, where, whereas the FS green hippies, <laughs> let's call them, um, they, they only kind of respond to peer authority. And so... Sure, they need tribes, I would yeah, say, right? Yeah, yeah, tribes, tribes. That's a good way of putting it. I, I, I'm yeah. being very callous with my words. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But tribes, in a, in a, yeah, yeah, what, what we know. I mean, they, they use the word tribes now with like the whole teal thing and whatever. Uh, yeah. Holacracy uses that, I guess, right? Like it's it's this word of like, you know, bond, a small group of people that know each other very well. Yeah. And tribes, all that jazz. But they're, they're all in like, you know, while they're both kind of we focused, um, they're very different characters, I guess. And they're kind of in opposition as in, you know, for the um, FS, group, the FS tribe, um, you know, they need to be able to relate with each other on a very um, personal level, whereas the DQs need some higher authority. And so that somewhat conflicts. Um, and then you've got the ERs sandwiched in the middle of them from your use case, which is more individualistic. And I guess, I guess, you know, uh, Wilbur kind of referred to the great chain of being, which I'm kind of discovering <laughs> more on my own journey. And like, you know, uh, I've got some people holding my hand from the higher branch and it feels like I'm holding other people's hands at a lower branch. And so, you know, if you have the FS, uh, just, you know, helping the ERs become more personal and seeing themselves, um, more appropriately and then you have the ERs holding the DQ hands and you know acting as that higher authority within a group of peers that don't really see authority and so forth down the ladder then um, maybe that's a way to integrate the whole system um, honestly though yeah. I've not had success so I can't tell you how to do it um, other no. than while trying, it's been very, very difficult. And I imagine that's really what you're coming up against. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's just my, you know, struggle of um, when you find the beautiful, I, I guess I brought it up because y you might find an incredibly resonant framework that just makes so much sense to you. And then at one point, you know, for me it was like, maybe a year and a half of just reading and, and, and sort of embodying those those frameworks. And then I was like, oh, wow, why don't we just start to apply them to the real world? And then like, bam, you know, <laughs> no, it's just, fuck, it's hard. That's, that's, that's the ontology issue. I've, yeah, I've yeah. Totally bumped into that. It's like, you know, it's like, these ontologies are real. <laughs> I tell you, they're real. Why can't we just use like and, and like that's always been my biggest fallacy is like seeing some kind of framework as you know or map as the territory and like you know espouse beliefs and rational action two different things and so like you know working with people at various stages of their development you know they're they're holding a particular value set. And so, you know, mm -hmm. self-organization. <laughs> yeah. Know, the DQs can talk as much as they like and profess <laughs> about self-organization, but they'll never organize themselves because they're looking for a higher authority. And so there's a lot of incongruence in that particular example. And so, you know, why can't we all just self-organize? Everybody believes in self-organization, <laughs> yet nothing's been happening. Um, well, that, that's probably why. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I guess, I mean, with um, 
um, uh, with self-organization and uh, the maybe trying to extend the uh, I was well it's not GT yet it's like the FS stage to to a wide group of people it's just not a good idea <laughs> I, you I guess you you tried it right even even maybe well the um, 60s are a prime example of that that's when uh, Nixon didn't know what the hell to do from what I hear. And uh, they were actually looking at a kind of large scale mutual credit or UBI uh, system uh, is the latter, not the former. Uh, so it, they were looking at UBI because of all the 60s counterculture. But had that happened, I don't really know what would have happened to America. Um, but it was very much going FS at scale at that point. And yeah, yeah. They, they didn't know how to handle it because it was just so radically different from all the institutions at the time, which were probably viewing things through a DQ. Blue. Yeah, something. yeah, yeah. No, no, but that's 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 the whole thing, right? Like, um, you, you, you. But these people sure as hell. I don't know. I, it's so hard for me to actually America. just speak about that, this. Right? That was, huh? I, I, I didn't see. Uh, like Woodstock was fantastic. I, I, I love Woodstock awesome. movie. And I think that, you know, concerts and all that beautiful stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then Hendrix solo. It was yeah. anything but sustainable. Right? <laughs> when you look at the video footage of Woodstock, it was just going to hell in a handbasket. And so if, sure. if it was those people running the country, can you imagine what would have happened on the world stage? Yeah. <laughs> that's the uh, you know it's like um basically i mean i'm imagining being there and you know making an argument like hey man can you be less loud because i'm trying to talk to my friend here and then this guy would just turn to me and say who the fuck are you to tell me to you know you authoritarian whatever and then like yeah, yeah i've experienced some i mean Yeah, I, <laughs> I was, I was, I was also like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I mean, mean, I probably am. I probably am at, at times. You know, recently, had a, actually, yeah, recently I had a similar experience on like a <laughs> sort of COVID uh, uh, behavior, whatever. Where else? Oh like, yeah, why yeah. are you to tell yeah. me that? Yeah. <laughs> I, it's, yeah, and that, that discussions yeah. happening world over all the time, everywhere with everyone. So, yeah. put on your mask. Or, Why are you worrying about your mask? <laughs> yeah, it's polar. And this, and this grounds it to the stages, right? Where you have like FS and DQs and the rationals, maybe making their own opinions about it and putting the mask to show. Well, ah, it's interesting if <laughs> you use the metaphor. Yeah. I think it's... <laughs> Crazy in theory, applied to masks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Graves apply to well, like, masks. Well, you'll see how, like, real rigid and dogmatic some people are with it. And, like, you know, like, I, I'm going for walks around here and I'm seeing people wearing masks in their car on their own, you know? Why? Yeah. Some authority no. wear your mask. And so my guess, that, just that's, doing that, full stop, always wear the mask. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, no, no, for sure, for sure. That's it. That's the thing. That's and right. I think that's where my, my allergy sort of comes from a bit, I think, yeah. That, that's, that's blue thing that can be also traced back to you know, parents dynamics and stuff like that. So it's interesting to, that's, that's uh, in a way, looking at, at yourself as just a developmental uh, or uh, yeah, an, a product of evolution mm -hmm. and looking at these frameworks and lenses, I think it's very important because then you start to look at where you need work, you know? <laughs> or where your allergy might be coming from, because there are parts of you that you've repressed. And I think in the article, you put it very nicely. Um, I think a stage two or the six stage process. Um, 
Well, you have to sort of every time you change, make sure that yeah, you heal, right? You said like Brian was bringing that up that you heal some parts before you move on or in the process of moving on. Um, yeah. I think yeah. that's probably around stage five though of the time and space to integrate, like start actioning the where you're at now. You know, you've made a shift, and so getting into yeah, I think that's the kind of two like you. Uh, you arrive, uh, I think, at the second stage is where there's the, the encounter with the dissonance. Yeah. And, you know, and there you have the option. Like, am I going, like, I think, uh, well, or stage three, I think. Yeah, sorry. I just noted it down. Um, two or three. And then you've got the inside stage, right? Where you actually, which is, a, a, I think, it's, it's probably the most interesting one we could discuss. But then you had either go back to the previous tools you've got mm -hmm. and try to transcend through that, yeah, only through that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or sort of get the insight that opens up new possibilities. Um, yeah. And yeah. I think that the whole idea of insights is quite interesting. And uh, one of my questions was to you, uh, maybe to ground it for whoever is listening you know insights is just like something that <laughs> um how i experience it i guess i don't know you just do a lot of work and you just like observe the world and it doesn't make sense and at one point there's a little light <laughs> somehow this is probably a, a way to describe it there's a little thing that just comes out of almost not even a cognitive process that tells you like this this is how it's works and it can be from uh if you go through therapy it can also be with a very good friend of yours that you're, you're sort of talking with and then all of a sudden there's just this thing that pops up and starts to you know it can be very small it can be like making sense of of, of a problem you're dealing with uh my or, sense or of more existential stuff experience has always been uh going into you know like there's some kind of ideology that brings you down a path and you go deeper and deeper and deeper down that path and then for me at least that insight usually arrives out of a fuck this moment <laughs> i'm not doing it anymore i gotta do it this way now and that's usually where it arises for me and whatever that insight brings you back out into a new landscape um, sure, and and there are ways to to trigger that those insights. Um, again, I think conversations with people and deep, like you said, you you would go into deep research and sort of you're going nowhere, and then all of a sudden, when you let go, that insight comes. Mm. It's usually in times where you're not expecting it that 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 yeah, you get this thing. Um, and I'm wondering, like, what graves? How graves? Because you you suggest some, or you you sort of direct people to to some techniques, therapies, approaches towards. But it's not necessarily related to insight. I thought maybe you read something about it. Um, so there was a number of kind of approaches to each of the um, levels. And so um, I guess it's probably easier just to read the article because they're there, yeah. given that we kind of map our learnings to a particular way. Uh, obviously you need to find where you are in the map in the first place. But like from DQ, it's Freudian. Uh, from ER, then it becomes more Rogerian and Mm -hmm. that's into the fs which are kind of more personal approaches and you know sure. prior to that, group work yeah yeah yeah, yeah. prior to that there's kind of cp for uh, skinner stuff happening at the cp level and so they're all different approaches i would imagine that anybody watching this is uh probably beyond the cp level anyway um and so yeah. you know it's generally freudian rogerian you know the er fs for the latter mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And they can just be delved into on your own, and just kind of um, practiced, I guess. Sure, sure. And I think there's, there's, there's quite a library these days to, to go through uh, yeah. in, in, in terms of psychotechnologies and, and yeah. I also to, think to that deal with that. Yeah. it's quite appropriate to, that like to identify and articulate um, your value. And so like knowing, knowing what you're valuing, I should say. Uh, so, you know, let, let's take the ER level as an example. It's like, it's a materialism of some sort. And it, that doesn't necessarily mean material success of money. Now, it can be anything. Um, so you're trying to manifest something in the world and to yeah. figure out what that is and actually manifest it is the way to move beyond. Mm -hmm. And so knowing what you're targeting at a given stage feels quite relevant to me, you know, um, are, sure. are you targeting sociocentricity or are you targeting some kind of uh, intractable problem? Are you targeting material success and so forth? And like knowing which of them and then asking, well, what's the intractable problem? What's the uh, material success? What's the sociocentric kind of thing that I'm trying to do? And what do I need to do to kind of get there? Sure, and, and and knowing then what resistances will come up through that process, right? And sort of almost anticipate them or seeing it in you. In you. Cool. Hey, uh, we've been talking for a while now. What do you think? Yeah, um, it's, it's been good to catch up with you. I'm hearing uh, my hosts here arriving back from their trips. So I think it's about a good time to wrap up. Yeah, that was that was lovely. And uh, wow, I mean, thank thank you for the effort you took to, to to put together this beautiful article and um thank you for let's that. uh yeah let's 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 do this more often and then let's keep sharing what we think is valuable i, I think that's awesome sounds like a plan i'm looking for cool I'll talk Ciao, to josh bye-bye